good morning and jai hind dear students so this is civics class and what we are discussing the chapter is democracy we have already discussed many topics topics in this chapter and those topics are what is democracy then we discussed about representative democracy elections right to vote then formation of the government opposition features of democracy and formulation formation of public opinion today what we have to discuss that is resolving conflicts so dear students you already know that india is a land of diversity and huh? different uh, differences in region race and religion sometimes divide people into groups as you know that we are having people from all religions hindus are here muslims are here christians are here sikhs are here then bodh and jain so we have different types of religions we have different types of regions also like uttar pradesh madhya pradesh rajasthan kerala tamil nadu karnataka so sometimes what happens differences in region race and religion it divides people into different groups and this disturbs the harmony of a country and gives rise to conflicts we have to discuss those conflicts today so conflicts about river water and dams so water conflicts in india have reached every level and divide every segment of our society political parties states regions sub regions uh, sub regions within states then districts castes and individual farmers so what we can say on each and every level people are divided on the issue of water conflicts which type of water conflicts there students so in countries with a federal structure of power conflicts over the distribution and uses of water during different times of the year are a constant source of tension where tension arises dear students in countries with a federal structure and if i'm talking about federal structure means federal structure is that where there is more than one level of government like in india we are having three different levels of government dear students for whole country it is central government for any particular state it is state government and for rural and urban areas there is third level of government in india uh, for rural areas it is panchayati raj system and for urban areas it is municipalities or municipal corporations so where federal structure are there there are conflicts over the distribution and uses of water during different times of the year in india the kaveri river now we are going to talk about kaveri river so kaveri river water dispute involves the states of tamil nadu karnataka and kerala while the krishna river uh, this issue krishna river water issue involves the states of maharashtra karnataka andhra pradesh and telangana and you know these issues have resulted in tensions between these states take example of the dispute over ravi and bees water that is between punjab and haryana so water conflicts arise due to scarcity of water and that is caused by faulty water management practices 
Understand? So most of the major rivers in India flow through more than one state. And that is the main problem of, that is the main issue of conflicts, main reason of conflicts. So water disputes arise due to, why water disputes arise are the use, distribution or control of water with respect to many interstate rivers or river valleys or the understanding of agreements relating to the use, distribution or control of such a water source. These are the reason. Even the implementation of any such agreement or in the levy of any water rate. These are the issues or these are the reasons of water disputes in India. Okay? And the last topic of the chapter is minorities. Dear students, minorities. So, all the citizens in a democracy have the freedom to protect their culture. All citizens. No matter their number is large or their number is less. No one can be prosecuted on basis of religion, race, caste or language. So all minority. Now here I want to explain that minority means people whose number is less. They can be on the basis of language. They can be on the basis of religion or other areas. For example, if we talk about who are in majority in India and who are in minority in India, so we can say that Hindus, Hindus are in majority in India. While other people who followed other religion, they are in minority. For example, Muslims, Christians, Sikh, Jainism and Buddhism. So the, the people from these religion, they are termed as minority because their number is less. So dear students, all minority communities, whether religious, linguistic or otherwise have equal rights to reside in different parts of the country and to protect their individuality. Means they are minority. They can reside any part of the country. There is no problem at all. And they are having a right to protect their culture. They are having a right to protect their individuality. So democracy can succeed only if people have faith in this system. If people are having faith in this system, then only democracy will be success. Will be succeed. If we have any disagreements, we should express them in a peaceful manner and try to understand the decisions of government before protesting against them. Means, if we are in any democracy and if we have any problem, so we can express ourselves. No matter there is number, their number is less or large or big. Like whether Hindus can protest there, Muslims can also protest in India while they are in minority and no one can suppress. Christians can also protest if they have any issue regarding anything. So, if we have any disagreements, we should express them in a peaceful manner and try to understand the decisions of the government before protesting against them. Only then will our democracy be able to function at its best. So dear students, like this all the topics of this chapter are completed. Now I am going to sum up the chapter. So democracy means government of the people which is answerable to the people. Right? Then a good democratic government is possible only if people are aware of their rights as well as their duties. Our country follows the system of representative democracy. Elections for both central and state legislatures are normally held after every five years. As voters, 
people should not be misled in the name of caste religion or regional loyalties there are certain essential conditions for the successful working of a democratic government such as awareness among citizens enlightened and wise leadership sound public opinion tolerance disciplined citizens discipline in political parties and social and economic equality many agencies help people in forming their opinions on any issue or problem water conflicts in india divide every segment of our society so dear students like this chapter number 4 that is democracy is completed now what you have to do you have to read all the topics carefully and today i will upload the pdf of this chapter and please write it in your fair notebook neat and clean and then you can submit your copies to your concerning teachers okay dear students so what you have to do again optional questions or tick the correct options type questions you don't have to do it in fair notebook please tick it in the book only no need to write it what you have to do in your fair notebook that is fill in the blanks true false match the column or question answers mm -hmm. understand so please write it as soon as possible and please submit it to me okay dear students so that's all for today thank you and have a nice day and from next class we will start revision of revision of all the chapters so in next class we will start revision of first chapter till then thank you and have a nice day